Ken, the district attorney says that both of the men charged knew the ghost ship wasn't to be lived in and wasn't safe. She's the daughter of the president-elect, and yet she was flying commercial. And not only that, she was flying in coach. It's a less than ideal situation for the commuters who leave here from Tiburon every morning and come back every night. We're learning that remains have been found during a search for a Cal Poly student who went missing 20 years ago. We are feeling the brunt of it right now. No matter where you are, you are certainly seeing some kind of rain. Yesterday, all that was falling out of the sky was rain. Today, it's snow, even down here at lake level. That happened at 6.15 last night, right during the rush hour. Not only were the bikers bold enough to do tricks. As it stands right now at this hour, you're not going to get anywhere any quicker on a bus than you would a car. More Bay Area headlines now. Contra Costa Water District customers have been saving water. But in return, their rates may go up 6%. Memorial Day is the unofficial start of summer, but this has been a tradition for generations in Northern California. When all these folks left Oroville, it was a mad dash out of here, a complete scramble, and an oftentimes chaos. BART is estimating that it needs about $9.6 billion just to keep its trains running. When it is wet and when it is windy, it's never a great combination for trees. True. You usually True. see one or two of them falling down here or there. And you know this wet weather is not over. The snowpack is in great shape. The reservoirs are as well. Now, the Department of Water Resources says it's up to them to make sure that they walk that fine line. And these 6,000 feet of tracks right here behind me are the intersection point of two very opposite arguments. Those who want those tankers here and those who certainly do not. All that rain you're talking about has been overwhelming to a lot of folks, but most especially to wastewater treatment plants. In fact, they've been so overwhelmed that some of what they're treating ends up in the bay behind me. The gas tax, which funds all that, went into effect 23 years ago. And in that amount of time, think about it. There have been hybrids, electric cars, a big push for public transportation, driving down all of the tax revenue that pays for transportation repairs. Tire after tire, closure after closure. California's roadways are taking their toll on drivers. Thankful that I didn't have a wreck after hitting that hole. We've seen lots of slides, but nothing like this. We've learned this winter's wet weather alone has done almost $7 million worth of damage to state roads, leading to more than 200 emergency projects and plenty more lined up behind them. And that doesn't even count the mess on local roads. The roads are bad, you know, a lot of troubles for everybody. Add that to an aging infrastructure already riddled with potholes, structural damage, and a $136 billion backlog, and you have what Governor Jerry Brown has deemed a top priority problem. It used to be called public works, and there's a lot of public work to be done, but you got you have to face up to it. So Brown gave the legislature an April 6th deadline to increase funding for local roads by $2.2 billion. But how that's done is the big battle. Are taxpayers prepared to foot that bill? I would be willing to pay that, yes. That would be a problem. <laughs> because the price is going up and people cannot afford too much gas. Supermajority Democrats are pushing an increased gas tax, increased registration fee, and a $100 flat fee per vehicle. In support of that today, Santa Cruz County sent all legislators these scenic postcards outlining the dire situation of roadways there and asking them to vote in favor of it. I do feel like it's needed, especially what we've, like you said, what we've seen with the rain and the snow. I think there are probably more important things than roads, but I am a believer in um, improving our infrastructure. And that $2.2 billion is just for local roads. That's not the total tab the governor is asking the state legislature for. He's asking for a total of $6 billion overall for infrastructure repairs. Reporting live in San Francisco, Emily Turner, KPIX 5. This is KPIX 5 News. Well, welcome back to KPIX 5 this morning. The time is 8 a.m. Good morning. I'm Devin Fuel. And I'm Emily Turner. Happy New Year. Across the country, thousands of revelers rang in the new year last night. Skies lit up with dazzling fireworks displays from San Francisco to Seattle. And in Times Square, an estimated one million people rung in the new year with cheers and kissing as the crystal ball dropped at the stroke of midnight. Security was tight at events across the nation with thousands of officers on the streets. But take a look, a closer look at the Space Needle in Seattle. At one point during that fireworks show, a fire started. You can see it right there. Police in Antioch are searching for the gunman in a deadly New Year shooting. It happened just before 8 last night at the Delta Pines apartment complex. The White House condemned what it called a horrific terrorist attack and offered U.S. help to Turkey. 
Just three weeks ago, 44 people were killed there in a double bombing attack outside an Istanbul soccer stadium. President-elect Donald Trump says that no computer is safe when it comes to keeping information private. He also added that he still has major doubts that Russia was even involved in the U.S. election. Oakland could soon become the next Bay Area city to crack down on short-term Airbnb rentals. Well, if Sacramento's application to the Department of Transportation is approved this month, self-driving cars could be seen on the streets by January of next year. Well, State Senator Jerry Hill, who is behind that bill, is joining us now. Senator, this has a lot to do with Prop 64 and its shortcomings. Explain what those are. Well, absolutely. What happened in Prop 64 would be that we lose over 1,000 individuals every year right now from drunk driving. We want to prevent that. It seems like this is something that should already be on the books. How is it that it's just now coming to the forefront? Well, in the, in the marijuana with Prop 64, it was just left out. It's interesting. There are some opponents to this bill. You know, they say, okay, you can't have an open container and you can't drive under the influence. So why do you need to add this? They say it's redundant. What do you say to the opponent? Well, uh, what I say is the same thing with alcohol. We want to be consistent, be in the governor's desk by September 15th. I know one thing that's on a lot of people's mind, especially now with recreational marijuana being legal, mm -hmm. is is there at some point going to be a set standard? I mean, we have one for drunk driving, right. 0 0.08. What is the, what is the plan for the state? Well, that's the real problem, because right now, the, the level of THC in your body, no one knows at what point you are impaired as a driver. And so the technology is trying to catch up with the, uh, with the legislation and with the initiative at this point. And I'm hoping in the next months, hopefully in the next six months or a year, we'll have the ability to test that on the road so we can keep those people who are impaired off the road and not behind the wheel. You can put that on your to-do list. That's on the to-do list. Well, yeah, that's exactly right. We definitely need one, that's for sure. Okay. Great. Thank you so much, Thank Senator. You. I appreciate it. It's <laughs> absolutely beautiful, all those yes. storms that we had. Well, we oh, yeah. had a brief respite and nice. a couple yes. of days of just clear, sunny skies, cooler temperatures. But I'm sorry to say that is all about to change starting in the next couple of days. Right now in San Francisco, though still nice and clear, 53 degrees looking out at the Bay Bridge live. Concord, a little cooler, 51 degrees. Santa Rosa, 49. Also chillier in Livermore at the moment. We do have two evenings worth of a winter spare the air alert. Unhealthy levels in the North Bay as well as the East Bay. So don't light your fireplaces tonight, even though it's going to be chilly. We're talking the mid-30s or the low 40s in most areas of the bay, so it is going to be a cooler morning. Here's our satellite and radar. This high pressure system here is what's allowed us to have those clear days, but this low pressure system here is what's going to make it all change. See these storms that are lined up? Those are going to hit us one after the other over the next couple of days, starting basically tomorrow afternoon. By 2 o'clock, it'll be partly cloudy, and then moving into the morning commute on Wednesday, the first round of that front is going to move in about 7 o'clock in the morning, so it'll make for a wet morning commute and then our wet evening commute even more wet by 7 o'clock on Wednesday evening. The story is this. It will have a chilly night. There will be areas of fog overnight and into the morning, and then it will be cooler on Tuesday with some sun and some clouds. And then the rain is going to return on Wednesday. Our temperatures, our highs for tomorrow, are actually going to be at or below average in the mid-50s in all areas of the Bay really cool in the inland areas, Fairfield at 51 degrees. Our seven day outlook looks very wet, but I don't want you to get too concerned. So it will be dry tomorrow. And then by Wednesday, the first round of wind and rain is going to start followed by showers on Thursday. Then on Friday, we have our second round of showers, or our second round of wind and rain followed by showers on Saturday. And then the third round of storms is going to move in on Sunday, followed by showers on Monday. So it will certainly be wet, but it will not be the wet weather that we've seen over the last couple of weeks. This will be less intense, although it will still certainly be soggy. We'll be right back just after this.